Hello folks, Jason Cressman here, JC's Bees. A little bit chilly out this morning. We got a good frost overnight, and uh, today I thought it would be an ideal time to discuss the dribble method and give you a little demonstration on what that is, how to do it all, and uh, you know, the last few days I've been reading over Randy Oliver's uh, articles on uh, the dribble method, and uh, it seems pretty easy. Once you follow all the steps, there's just a lot of steps to follow. So what I hope to do today is make that a little bit easier for people to understand by following this video. So what we're going to need is you're going to need water, you're going to need sugar, and you're going to need wood bleach or oxalic acid. And um, the water, I may need to go ahead and give you a warning, you may need to get distilled water. And I'll explain that here in a couple minutes. So what you're going to do with this dribble method is basically you're going to mix up a, a sugar syrup and then you're going to add some auxilic acid to it. Um, then you're going to put it in a syringe and then you're going to take five milliliters and put between each split between the frames all the way across the hive where you see the bees. Now for a deep hive it takes about 50 milliliters to do this. So for my calculations it ought to take about 25 to do my nukes and that's my plans for today is to get my nukes hit. So by treating the mites now, knocking them down even more, we'll have even a lower varroa mite count and the beef should be able to thrive a little bit better through the winter. So let's go ahead and get set up and uh, start breaking this down. There's going to be a few things you're going to need before you can even get started at this process. You're going to need some sugar. You're going to need some water. And you may need to use distilled water. You'll have to do a test, which I will show you here in a second, to see if your tap water is high in calcium. Uh, if it is high in calcium, then you'll have to resort to the distilled water. You're going to need some auxilic acid or wood bleach. And if you're not sure where to get this, most of your hardware stores carry it. Or I have it listed below in my Amazon store. Check out the video description. Um, you're also going to need some syringes. For 10 frame colonies, you're going to want at least 50 milliliter syringes. And for nukes, you're going to want at least 25 milliliter. Um, the reason for that is, is it takes 50 milliliters to do a 10 frame and it takes 25 milliliters to do a nuke. You're also going to need a way to measure um, 600 milliliters in which this measuring cup works out perfect for me and you're going to need a set of small scales that weighs in grams. The reason for the scales is, is you get a lot more accurate reading versus just using tablespoons to scoop up and not being exactly accurate. So to be accurate, I suggest you buy a cheap set of scales and keep them on hand and add them to your beekeeping kit. Now let's do this water test. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do according to Randy Oliver's uh, website is you want to check your water and see if it's too hard. Um, we're gonna do this by applying a little bit of the oxalic acid into the water and mixing it up and we're gonna let it rest for a little bit. Um, if it gets cloudy and stays cloudy, we're going to have to get distilled water. If it remains clear, then we will be able to use it to mix up our recipe to apply the dribble. I do three little scoops. The recipe I will be using makes one liter, which is enough to treat 20 10 frame hives. To make a mixture that treats 10 hives, simply divide the recipe in half. To treat 5 hives, simply divide the recipe by force, which would look something like this. We're going to need 600 milliliters of water heated to at least 150 degrees. We're going to need 600 grams of sugar. Okay, so I got my before I uh, mixed my water and my sugar together, you know, I had the 600 milliliters of uh, water. I went ahead and poured a little bit in this cup. 
and that's so that I can mix the acid in it and let it dissolve and then I'll pour it into the syrup. Um, I've got 45 grams of acid here that I've weighed out after re-zeroing the empty container on the scales to get a zero and then I added the 45 grams of acid. So now what we need to do is we need to add it to our water and we need to stir it in. I guess this stick that I'm using is adding some foreign debris. I ain't gonna have any concerns with that because you know, if it goes out on the bees, the most they're going to do is kick it out of the hive if they don't like it. So, get that acid to dissolve, and then we'll pour it into the syrup. It might take a second. You got to keep stirring it and working it around. So, once you've get it stirred in really well, and you see that the crystals are not gathering back on the bottom, go ahead and add it to your syrup, and then stir it in. Now, we'll have to let this set a little while and let it cool to room temperature before we can go dribble it on the bees. Don't really think the bees would want 150 degree water running down their back. So, we'll let this cool, let the sun come up, let it warm up a little bit. Then we're going to go in there and we're going to dribble this on the bees. Now, when you do this, ideally you would want them to be pretty much broodless. So you want to wait till the cold temperatures are in your area and the brood production has slowed down, maybe even completely stopped, and there's very little brood. The reason for that is, is this will not kill any Varroa that's in them capped cells. Sitting at about 41 degrees, so bees aren't gonna to be too excited to see me when I pop the cover this morning. So I'm gonna use my smoker, I'm gonna wear my veil, got my uh, fleece on, and I'm not gonna worry about taking any stings to the body. Um, we're going to get our acid and our syringes here in a second and we're going to get started. The one thing I want to mention though that I didn't mention, when you mix up your acid syrup solution, you don't want to put it in a jar and shake it to mix it. When you add the acid to the syrup or to the water um, and then you put a lid on it and shake it, it can build pressure and when you take the lid off, it can get you in the eye and you don't want that. Um, I'd also like to recommend that if you're going to make a big jar of this, and this here will treat approximately 20 hives, 20 10 frame hives, um, when you go to store it, it should be stored in a refrigerator. And once it's in a refrigerator, it can last probably a good year. But just to leave it out at room temperature for any longer than a day, um, the shelf life will go downhill and it can actually make your bees sick. So make sure you store it in a refrigerator if you're keeping it any more than 24 hours. And then I would also let it come to room temperature before you put it on the bees. So now we're gonna put, since I'm doing nukes, I'll need 25 milliliters. You gotta burp it and get that little air pocket out of there. There we go, we got 25 milliliters. You'll notice that I also added tubing to my syringe. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna make it easier to get it out of your jar and it's gonna make it easier to keep it between the frames when you're guiding, as you'll see here in a second. We've got four frames that look like they're completely capped off in honey. We've got a feeder that's empty. Cause I'm just gonna go right here between the frames and 
be my dribble. Now since I've got a feeder in this top box, I won't be using the full dose because there's not the extra crack to go between or split between frames. For that reason, I'm going to do a little bit on this outside edge and then I'm going to go back and go through here one more time and that's it. So now we will close it back up. Didn't even have to disturb the bees on that one. That was nice. So that was pretty easy, really. Um, you know, there's nothing to go back and remove. It was fairly easy. Um, it cost pennies to treat each hive versus dollars, and I like that. Um, and uh, you know, I had most of the stuff around here. And now I feel that I've done my part to its fullest extent to drop the mite count as we go into these colder months and uh, that feels pretty good um, it's like a lo little extra bit of insurance there right when it starts to get cold um, and you know the more I read over Randy Oliver's site um, I see where he uses it in the spring when he's making up uh, nukes and splits because they're already broodless so kind of makes sense maybe I'm gonna start adding that into my uh, routine I would like to uh, instruct you to go to the description below this video and follow the link to Randy Oliver's website and uh, read up more on this. Um, there's some great information to back up his studies and he even talks about how oxalic acid is found naturally in plants. So it's a pretty interesting read. So I encourage you to take a few minutes to go there and check that out and also down in the video description you'll find links to the syringes and other miscellaneous items that I used in this video. I'd also like to note that when you're on Randy Oliver's website you'll be able to find this graph and he has it where you can uh, download a PFD and then you're able to print it. So kind of handy to have around and as just a little side note the mixture I made was one liter and I used the 3.2 percent weight by volume, the medium. So I'd love to hear uh, some feedback on your situation. Have you used the dribble method before? How did it work? If you're new to beekeeping, this could be your first opportunity. We're going into colder weather, and now is the time that there's no brood or very little, and you're able to do this dribble method. Do you think you'll start to put this into your uh, yearly routine? Will you try it this year? Um, from for those of you that did it before, I'd love to hear some feedback from you and anything you do different than maybe what I did here. Um, like I mentioned, this is my first time to experiment with this, so um, I'm sure there was some room for improvements. So from you advanced guys that did this before, leave a note down below. I'd love to hear some more from you. So I hope this video has been helpful, and if so, give it a thumbs up so it'll be boosted in the YouTube search ranks. And if you haven't subscribed, please take time to do so. And make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, folks.